Hello and welcome to another data talk, this time around Data 2030 Summit and its MEA edition. Today I will speak with Christian Rasmussen, Head of Technology at Grootfus Future Lab. Christian, thank you for joining this talk. Can you please tell us more about the company and especially about yourself, your professional background and current working focus? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, uh, Natasha. I'm, uh, I'm working in the company uh, Kronfos, which is uh, more than 75 years old and uh, known in the, in the pump business. We are moving more into, uh, into service business and provide more, uh, more value in, in, in that sustainability and energy saving area. And uh, I've been with the company for more than uh, 23 years. Uh, today, I'm working in Grundfos uh, Future Lab, which is our, uh, our corporate uh, venture organization. And I'm working in delivering efficiency on a larger chill water plants because they are, they are vastly energy wasted in those plants that, that we can actually go and save. I have a background in engineering. I also build a, a data analytics and a data engineering team in Grundfos. So I also have a good data background when I work in, in this building venture space. Thank you for this introduction. And at the event uh, this uh, March, uh, you will share more on from value to data in corporate startup. Can we know what the delegates at this event can expect from your presentation? Yeah, they can expect an insight in what does it feel like, what does it look like, what uh, ways do we actually work in a small cross-functional team when we uh, when we uh, build a venture from uh, from the very start and from the outset. So working in corporates, uh, we often have uh, or we have larger uh, organizations taking care of different uh, functions, uh, having larger volumes uh, of data. So traditionally, you are trying to uh, uh, to assemble those data and uh, find value from that. Working, uh, starting with uh, designing the business uh, from the outset, we have the opportunity to really start looking for the value. And then on, and then build what is needed uh, for the data back and to support that value and that business. So it's kind of doing it the other way around. We expect to be very insightful presentation. And at the beginning, you mentioned a little bit about Grundfos Future Lab, but can we know more about it and especially about its approach to address the needs with data and value? Yeah. So the objective of Grundfos Future Lab uh, is to make businesses that can scale and uh, not only financially and uh, uh, and revenue wise but also can scale impact on the uh, sustainability and uh, in grown for future that we have uh, three innovation uh, labs uh, two of them are working in the water area and uh, the innovation lab where i'm working we are working in the uh, carbon uh, carbon footprint area and we start we, we really have this uh, fun we start from uh, idea uh, building uh, concepts going into incubation, proving that uh, there is a, a business value and there is value for the customer. It's uh, feasible, uh, it's desirable, and uh, it's viable uh, for every party in, uh, in that area. And then we really put that uh, thing that the data layer from, uh, from the start and, uh, and, uh, and the build business that can actually thrive on, on data in order to be able to scale them. Thank you for sharing that. And um, it's interesting because uh, most uh, organizations talk about uh, the approach from data to value. Well, you will share more on the opposite approach from value to data. Can we know more about this approach and how it shapes organization data strategy, for example? Yeah. <clears throat> Of course, it's also a little uh, playing with the words because uh, <laughs> many people say from the data to value. Um, but it is actually also the mindset uh, when we start building a business from scratch, figuring out where is really the value at the customers uh, and starting from there. Um, and I, in, the, in my presentation at the, uh, at the conference, uh, at, the, at the summit, I will also share some very practical methods how we are doing it. For example, when we are working with user experience, um, when we look at templates uh, coming out of user experience, it's a lot about uh, the people, how they experience, what they see, what they feel, what they need. There's no data involved in that. And when we work with data pipelines, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, wrangling, there's a lot of ingestion, uh, there's a lot of data modeling, uh, but there's no user experience involved in that. So, so I will also I will I will share how we actually uh, in a small team uh, when we work closely together are able to uh, to integrate the thinking of uh, data into, for example, user experience. 
Yeah, you a little bit touched upon something that I want to ask in my next question, and that's what resources or processes organizations need to apply this approach. So some of the resources and approaches that I find is uh, is uh, very important here is to work in a lean agile startup way, uh, because it's very important to co coordinate across uh, uh, the person or the, the, the small team that takes care of operation experience, uh, the commercial end and the, and the technology. Uh, and this does not fall out of a, of a larger corporate tool. This actually falls out of a lot of uh, integrated working, understanding each other, uh, establish a common language. And very important here, the common language is not only about the spoken and the, the, the written word. The common language is also about data and putting data on uh, on all kinds of elements uh, in, in that business. Okay, and um, nowadays, how uh, this approach uh, from value to data is essential for the organization that you work for, but in general for other organizations? The working from value to data, it's important for our organization because it enables us to uh, develop and maintain only what is needed uh, in, in the data backend and uh, the tools that we are using to deliver that specific value to, uh, to the customers. Uh, like we build a minimum viable product, a minimum viable service, and then we can build exactly what is needed for that, while also thinking about what, uh, what is the, the larger picture and what do we need to bring in place to be able to scale it later on. Um, I think for other organizations, uh, what sometimes, uh, what I've seen happen uh, also in Grundfos and in other organizations is that uh, it can be difficult to focus uh, the attention of, uh, of the whole team. It can be difficult to focus the attention um, uh, of, uh, of multiple organizations and parties into that. And really being very, very crisp on the, the core value uh, we are delivering, uh, that helps actually uh, to, uh, to, to get the common understanding. In, in our team, uh, we are focused on uh, on one number, and that is the efficiency of a chill water plant. That is what everything is about in from from our uh, initial uh, marketing till we actually deliver the value to the customer. So that's it's just an example how one data point can actually be uh, be uh, connecting uh, the, the work and uh, the value we are doing across the whole business. That was very useful to hear. And did you face any challenges uh, while applying this approach in the company? And what were the ways to overcome them? Yeah. So I think um, I would expect most of the uh, the viewers and listeners here to have experienced that uh, um, people that are data savvy are grown up using data. That's a skill set that some people have, but um, uh, most people with uh, with the different uh, educations does not have that the data language, data vocabulary, and the data savviness. Perhaps they can use an Excel spreadsheet, but that does not mean that they really understand the data model. So, so that's one of the, the things that uh, that uh, is uh, can be an obstacle and uh, that needs to be uh, put attention to. It's not that it's impossible or it's too difficult. You just need to put attention to actually also talk about data. Uh, in in, um, in many of the aspects uh, and, and and in the daily work. Thank you. And um, do you have any final benefits to emphasize of this approach for the organization and overall the data management uh, today? Once uh, everything is in practice. So uh, it, it, for us, it enables us to move uh, faster. It enables us to uh, cut away things that we uh, we should not we should not do uh, really to to use this approach uh, focus on the value and then come with the data what it what it's also helping uh, doing and um, is that it really helps us when we engage um, uh, consultants or companies uh, that support us because we can be much more clear and much more crisp on what is the value we want to deliver and then they can actually come and support us much better in what they are good at, at, at doing. So we don't tell them what to do. We tell them what is the value that we want out of uh, out of that support. Thank you. And based on all these lessons learned throughout this uh, journey of applying uh, this approach uh, from value to data, what final recommendations do you have for uh, anyone interested in applying it? 
Yeah. So now when I talk about this one number that goes across our business, it sounds like, okay, this is, uh, this is just the way it is and it's easy to capture. This was really hard work to get to that one number. So that is my recommendation. Uh, put in that groundwork, understand what is the core value you're providing to your, to your customers and what are the key, few key data points that will support you in the delivering that value. Uh, then when you have that, then think big, think, okay, what does it take to scale on these uh, few uh, the data points? And then start building uh, really with a minimum viable uh, product, the minimum viable thing you can uh, put into operation. Great. Uh, and um, to our last question uh, for this talk, uh, can we know according to you what data management trends can we expect maybe in the upcoming 12 months? Yeah. So. Uh, one of the one of the things that we need to or that will happen uh, in the world over the next uh, 12 months, of course, we are moving into digitalization using more data, but the green transition is a wave that uh, is uh, very very strong at the moment. Um, and from working in the in the Academy of Technical Sciences in Denmark, I looked into a future of sustainable manufacturing, and there's a big gap. In, in, the, in the data foundation uh, to really understand what, how are the company doing on sustainability, how can we move ahead, uh, really report on sustainability in the same solid matter as we report on, on financials. So data, data management for sustainability, understanding for sustainability reporting, uh, I see that is uh, really coming forward now. That was interesting, I have to admit. And uh, Christian, thank you once again for finding the time to do this interview. It was a pleasure to talk with you. See you soon in Dubai. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me in the session. See you soon.